Let's talk about 007. And in today's video, I'll be continuing on with the Java programming series with episode three. And in today's video, it'll be a short one. We'll be covering the different data types that we'll be using throughout this course. So essentially the different kinds of variables um, in Java. So on the screen right now, you're gonna see the list of the eight kind of primitive data types in Java. So these are the eight kinds of um, data types that you can basically make a variable. Now, um, for those of you, or we're also using string, but string is not considered a data primitive type. It's actually considered a object, um, but it is treated very specially by Java, uh, at least allowing you to type in string. So I'll, I'll show you that after though. Now, so here's the eight that are used in Java. Uh, we'll be only using really three in this kind of a course for the most part. And those ones are gonna be um, Boolean, double, and int. So we'll start off with what, which, which, with what each one of them is. So first off, Boolean. Uh, Boolean is easiest to understand. It's a variable that can only be true or false. So to initialize it and to use it, you would type in Boolean. And then a variable name, so you can uh, name it whatever you want. So we can just call it name one equals, and it must be either true or false. If you need anything else, it will provide an error. So that's what a Boolean is. A Boolean is a true or false um, variable. Now, Booleans are especially used for cases where you want to run certain things and other things. So for example, in the next episode will mostly be covering if statements. So you can say, if something is true, set the, the Boolean value to true. And then what that will do is it might run something else. Cause you may have a, you know, a different statement saying, if it is true, then run, run this code. So uh, Boolean oftentimes is for like flow management, being able to control what things run. You don't oftentimes print out Boolean variables because true or false is not very useful. Now I'll show you guys double. So double is very similar to what we did yesterday, or not yesterday, in the last episode with, with int, which is integer. Uh, double can be initialized by doing double, and then the name, so equals. Now a double is like an int, as it is a number, except it allows you to have decimal points. Now, if you noticed earlier on the screen, uh, it did provide a value. It's some kind of crazy number. It can go really, really high. Um, but basically, it's, it's a number with a decimal. So we can do um, 70.68, and that's a valid double, var uh, da double value. In the last value, we used int. So int, um, give it a name. And int is just simply a whole number, so five. Now, earlier I mentioned that string is not technically a primitive data type, but it is instead an object. And, but although we'll almost treat it like a data type. So to initialize a string, we just type in string with capital S, give it a name, equals, and then in between quotation marks, my name, for example. And with a colon. And there we go. So we've now successfully created the four kinds of variables that we'll be using in this series. So you didn't, you may have not noticed earlier, I said that you can actually put numbers in a string value. So I, I could technically put Hayden 12 there. And this is still valid. So you may ask, well, why would I use an integer value if string can hold numbers as well? Um, st since string is an object and not a data type, you can't add strings. So let's say you had two strings, one's 12 and one's 12, you can't add them together. So that's where you can use things like, you know, string to int functions, where it will simply turn a, you can turn a string into an int. So if a, or if it has an int inside of it, you can extract the int 
or extract the number and making it an integer value because then once it's a data type like an integer or a double you can then go ahead and start adding them together or subtracting or doing a different kinds of math to them so that's pretty much it we'll run through a really quick example um using a string for example but they're very similar to what we used did in the last episode where we took an input and did an output again so we'll do the same thing again just with a different value this time so we'll use a string this time so um, like I said, it's the same thing as last time. So if you were to replace, for example, the ints in the last tutorial with doubles, you can then add in, subtract, multiply, etc., um, etc., uh, digits with decimals. So we'll go ahead now and we'll ask the user for its name, for his or her name, and then we'll print out their name. So we'll go ahead and uh, do that. So I went ahead and just printed a simple print line statement asking for what is their name. Now I'll we'll go ahead and use our scanner input object that is from our last tutorial and we'll input the string name. So, or we'll enter in um, their name. So to do that, we'll do string value equals input.next. So string value is the name of the string. Uh, of course we could rename this to name, for example, and then we'd have to rename this as well as well to name, but we'll leave it as string value for now. So at this point, what it will do is it will take the input from the user and whatever they type in the keyboard will instantly get put into string value. Now you may, get, you may notice that over here, we actually already have value for string value. And what will happen is it will override it. So in, essentially we actually can delete this for now. So now that we have their name in our memory, we can go ahead and use it. So now what we'll do is we'll use the print, this is not out.printf function to um, print out their name and we'll say hi to them. So what I've written here is system.out.printf, hello. And from the last video, we learned that printf allows us to put placeholders. And so we did percentage mark S. And what that is, is a placeholder for a string value. And then we did exclamation mark and close quotes, did a bracket, and then we did on the other side of the bracket, the variable we want to use in the first placeholder and the only placeholder, which is string value. So now we'll go ahead and run our program. What is your name? Hello, Hayden. And there we go. So we'll add the new line sign at the end. New line basically moves, it creates a new line after running this. So next time you run it, it will just move it down. So there you go guys, that is pretty much it for this video. So we, now that we've covered, covered, sorry, the different data types that we're using in this episode, we can now go ahead onto a little slightly more advanced things now that we know, you know, what to use for what situations. So to recap one last time, a Boolean value or Boolean variable is simply a true or false um, value. Uh, a double is a number with a decimal place. An integer is a whole number and a string is something with inside of it. So really it's pretty broad. You can use um, characters, numbers, um, special symbols, anything you want really. All right, guys. So I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Um, like I said, the next tutorial will be a little more in depth. We'll be covering if statements and um, if statements are pretty powerful, allowing us to do certain things. So stay tuned for that. Also, I'll be covering my keyboard in a pretty soon video, and I hope to get Wallpaper Wednesday up either this week or next week. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys do enjoy. And uh, for those of you in exam, we'll, in exam week, like I am, uh, study hard. And I'll see you guys in the future videos. So this is the Hacker 0 7 and I'm signing off.